Garage. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Gray's Garage. So today we're going to be talking about downforce. Everyone's heard about it. Everyone wants more of it. And how do we get it? More downforce leads to greater traction, which leads to higher cornering speeds, more aggressive braking points, and greater stability. So how do we get this ever elusive downforce? Two words, aero devices. So aero devices are add-ons or geometrical changes to the car's exterior, which promote the creation of downforce or the reduction in lift and sometimes even the reduction in drag. Now in the near future, I'll be creating a video uh, which more exclusively talks about all the different types of aero devices that you can add to your car and how they work. But today I need to address something that's really been bugging me lately, roof spoilers. Simply put, roof spoilers at the bottom of the food chain when it comes to aerodynamic efficiency. Let's say that each aero device is represented by an animal and the purpose is to carry weight. That's how you measure the efficiency. A rear mounted wing would be an elephant. You'd have a front splitter, which would be a camel. A uh, rear spoiler would be something like a uh, horse. This is a trunk mounted spoiler. And then way down at the bottom, you have your roof mounted spoilers, which would be like the fucking monkey from Aladdin. That's a pretty bad analogy. <laughs> um, but the bottom line is that roof spoilers are just stupid. They're just really, really dumb aero devices. So I understand that cars are an expression of yourself. Uh, you want to look cool, you want to be individual, you want to stand out, but unless you want the more educated car guys to be laughing at you as you drive by, you should probably stick to, um, you know, modifications that actually help your car, uh, modifications that actually make sense, and especially for aerodynamic modifications, you really got to, you know, know your stuff here. So for your car, many engineers spent thousands of hours designing the exterior of your car, optimizing the airflow, making sure that rear spoiler gets every last drop of downforce with no drag. And by adding this roof spoiler, you've basically walked up to them and said, no, you're wrong, and slapped them in the face. You know, all that optimization, all that design, no, you're wrong, this roof spoiler is better. I know better than you. And this whole notion of this, the stupid modification, which is the roof spoiler, uh, came to me when I was walking through the parking lot in a local mall here. So I was walking back to my car and I noticed this uh, Subaru STI, big rear wing, brand new. And it had this roof spoiler. Here, I got some pictures. And I just couldn't, I couldn't fathom why this guy put this roof spoiler on. I'm assuming it's a guy. It basically, just looking at it, it just negates the whole purpose of having this huge rear wing. You're basically just deflecting that airflow over the wing and making it completely useless. Um, so to me, it's the stupidest thing ever. And I, I mean, the more I thought about it, the more I'd see them everywhere, especially on things like Hondas. Um, Hondas with the big rear wings too. I don't know why people, and I even saw one lately just last week on a Mazda 3. Um, he had a rear spoiler with a gurney flap, and then he had a roof spoiler with a gurney flap as well. And I was just sitting there in traffic going, oh my God, this is so stupid. This needs to stop. I'm making a video on this. We gotta, we gotta end this, this fad. I mean, like, honestly, if, if you want to remove the effectiveness of this giant rear OEM wing that you have, just take the wing off. I mean, what's the point of having this huge rear wing when you're just negating its effect completely with this roof spoiler. Since I've been noticing it more and more, I looked online, looked at some of the manufacturers, there's a couple, there's one big one in the US, and uh, looked at, you know, what are, the, some, what are some of the claims or selling points? And uh, let's just see here if I can find out. So one of the manufacturers claims that it's a great aerodynamic addition. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know what aerodynamic means. They never defined it. So I emailed them twice and asked, could you please define what aerodynamic means to you and your product? And no surprise, no response. So um, this, is, this is a video kind of for them saying, um, this is what aerodynamic means in, in, their, in their statement. And that basically means poor aerodynamics. So at this point, you might be saying to yourself, you know, Graham, I, I like my rear you know, roof spoiler. It looks cool. It makes my car look cool. You know, all you've done is just babbled on how it's so bad. 
you haven't showed me anything, any proof. You might just be full of crap. And that's right. You know what? You're completely true. So let's take a look at some experimental results. I've got some tests for a, a Nissan GTR with the roof spoiler and a, a huge rear wing, and uh, also for the new FRS. Uh, this is, the FRS is a beautiful shape, well-designed shape for a rear spoiler and a rear wing. And the addition of a roof spoiler for this car in particular is just the stupidest thing you can do. Um, besides vortex generators, which are also really dumb. We'll talk about it later. Um, so let's take a look at some experimental results for these two cars and I can show you uh, the proof and the reason why I'm bashing them so hard. So we're going to be estimating changes in downforce and also it changes in drag. Now for the Nissan stuff, which is the hydrogen bubble, it's just a visualization so we can't make any estimates. We can just see the change in the flow field and make some cool, you know, educated guesses. Uh, but for the FRS, I did PIV, and I've talked about this a little bit before. PIV is very uh, or quantitative. Um, we can actually make some numerical estimates of the change in downforce, the change in drag. And so I did a control volume approach. I talked about this a little bit at the end of my last uh, episode, episode seven. Check that out if you, if you wanna know what I'm talking about. And we can actually compare these things and see, you know, how much does each device add in terms of downforce? How much does it add in terms of drag? And so I did the car with, uh, you know, clean OEM spoiler, uh, the really popular Rocket Bunny sort of duckbill spoiler, uh, with the roof mounted spoiler, and also with a giant rear wing. So let's take a look at some of these results, and you can see just how stupid roof spoilers are. All right, let's, let's we're going to do some pop-ups here and show you some results. So, uh, you know, the clean case, great, that's the baseline. We're gonna say that's one, and then we're gonna compare any changes here to that baseline. So, you know, sometimes an OEM rear spoiler can actually decrease your drag. Uh, for this car in particular, because of the nice shape, doesn't add, it doesn't decrease the drag, it actually increases it a little bit, as we see here, but it comes with the benefit of reducing the rear lift. Um, and it also might increase the stability of your flow, which we showed, or which I showed in the, in the last episode um, with the addition of a gurney flap. So it can st stabilize your flow, it can you know, decrease your, your, your uh, lift a little bit. Great, it was designed properly. More aggressive solution uh, would be the really popular Rocket Bunny tail, which is this huge rear spoiler. And um, it greatly increases your drag, as we can see here but it also greatly decreases your lift. So it's, it's decreasing your lift, but increasing your drag. Okay, you know, it's a trade-off. If, if, you, if you need more downforce at the rear tires, you don't really care about the extra fuel cost or the reduced top speed, great. Rock, you know, Rocket Bunny spoiler works great. So if we think, okay, well, rear spoilers mounted to your trunk work so great, let's double that that uh, you know benefit and add a roof spoiler we'll just you know we'll, we'll stagger them we'll it'll be great it doesn't work that way okay the flow coming off or you know around your body encounters your roof spoiler first and then it makes its way down to the trunk spoiler if you ruin the flow upstream before it reaches that uh, trunk spoiler it's it's it, totally negates the effect of that trunk spoiler. Let's take a look here, you know, with the uh, OEM spoiler and the, uh, the um, roof spoiler, what happens? So what we see is that the drag is much higher than the OEM. It's very similar to the aggressive rear spoilers, that rocket bunny tail, but it has the worst reduction in lift. So basically what you're doing is you're adding a device which increases your drag, but doesn't give you the benefit which the, you know, the proper rear spoiler would. So you think you're being cool and you know, making your car better, but you're actually being stupid and making your car worse. And the reason for this, as you can see in the picture, is that it ruins the flow upstream and it causes, the, so what it does is it causes the flow to separate from the body, creating a low, you know, a low speed region just downstream, which is the blue region here. And that blue region is this, you know, increases the size of your wake, and that wake basically increases your drag. So when you have a trunk mounted spoiler at the very back, you can see that the wake is increased again, but it's increased at the very back of the car. 
when you do it upstream, it ruins the flow for everything downstream. Oh God, I hate roof spoilers. Oh. And as I said before, you know, if you have a rear trunk mounted spoiler and you add a roof spoiler, it doesn't double your gains. So let's take a look here. We have the rocket bunny tail. We add a roof spoiler, yay, you know. So basically what it does is it creates the same flow condition, almost the same flow condition uh, as the just the roof spoiler itself. Slightly better downforce, I guess, because the rear tail is deflecting up some of that stuff. But basically what it's doing is ruining the flow upstream and basically making it the same as just having a roof spoiler. You're basically totally negating your awesome rear spoiler. So if you really want max downforce, you need to go with a proper rear mounted wing. This creates the most downforce out of any of the aero devices, but it comes at a cost, the highest drag. Now, naturally you're getting what you pay for, and really this is only applicable for race applications. If you're gonna run it on the street, you're gonna be increasing your fuel consumption like crazy, and you don't need that for just going to get groceries. So what we've seen here, uh, we can show some hydrogen bubble results, uh, for the GTR, we've already seen it for the FRS, is that a roof spoiler basically ruins the flow upstream, so you're basically negating any benefit or the, the majority of the benefit from your huge rear wing. So the, the way a wing works is it deflects air upwards, you know, creating a counteracting force, which is down, which is the down force, and the wings do this so well by redirecting flow without causing separation, without causing a wake of slow moving flow. Um, when you add a roof spoiler upstream, you're creating this wake of slow, slow moving turbulent flow, which is the blue region here, and that's upstream of your wing, so your wing doesn't actually get to work as, you know, as it's intended. It's placed away from the body so that it's up in the high speed airstream, so it can deflect this high speed airstream up and effectively produce downforce. So you're, you're just totally ruining that when you add this roof spoiler upstream. So things like the STI, uh, things like some of the Hondas have some big OEM rear wings, uh, the GTR, you're basically ruining that flow. So you might as well not even have that rear wing. Um, you know, a lot of engineers spend a lot of time designing those properly and you're basically just slapping them saying no, my roof spoiler knows what you know knows what's going on. This co these companies they've done their research. They know what aerodynamic means. Now I have to say the only car which would benefit from a roof spoiler would be a hatchback, because a roof spoiler for a hatchback is basically the same thing as a trunk mounted spoiler for a regular car. So it's not really the same thing. I'm not talking about the same thing here, but technically it would be called a roof spoiler. That's the only case you should use one of these. After everything we've learned today, after everything we've talked about, if you still sit back and think, screw him, I like my roof spoiler, I paid $120 for it, it looks cool, I'm gonna run it. Good for you, you know, whatever makes you feel special. Um, but at least now you know what it's doing to your car. Um, personally, if I had one, I would turn it into a tray table to serve my friends drinks. Um, because it's not doing you any good. And I would really be curious if anybody has one of these to see what your fuel mileage is doing before and after, if it significantly changes. Um, it might be just a point or two in the miles per gallon, but I would really be curious. It's definitely going up. Um, so if you wanna pay more money for fuel, um, I mean, you could just stick your hands out the window and be the same same benefit or maybe you know you can make some wings and create some downforce that way it's pretty much the same effectiveness so stay tuned till next time we're gonna be looking at convertibles and what they mean for you Chris Garage. These fucking birds